the exponential moving average EMA is a type of moving average that assigns greater weight to most recent place data. Unlike the simple moving average where all data points have the same weight, the EMA weighting factors to place data decrease exponentially, meaning that the EMA reacts more significantly to recent place changes. In the chart, the EMA is represented with a white line and the SMA is represented with a blue line. Most of the indicators are calculated using the closing price as an input. Due to the weighting factors, you can see how the EMA is plotted higher in this day and the next day. Be aware that the weighting factors changes from different length. The more closing prices it considers, the less weight recent prices will have since the indicator will distribute the weights over more recent data. The EMA length 20 is slower, making small changes in its line due to the number of observations and the weighting of more recent bars. The most common EMA lengths are 10 bars, 50 bars, or 200 bars moving average. I don't recommend the EMA as an indicator to open or close a position, but they can be used to confirm signals from other indicators. The moving average exponential can be used to identify the trend as well as support our system levels. Crossovers with price or with another moving average can provide trading signals. For example, the 150 EMA applied to Tesla share shows that there is a tendency to the upside on November 2012. You can see how the stock price trades above the EMA, understanding this as a strong momentum, but only if the stock price is able to maintain the gap with the EMA. You can visualize a huge gap between the EMA and the stock price and even going into December of 2013, the EMA doesn't change its trajectory. You could say that the stock price bounced once reaching the EMA and it keeps going in the same direction, but reducing the distance between the stock price and the EMA until December of 2014, where the EMA changed its direction, calling also a change in the direction of the trend. The stock price goes below the EMA, confirming the change in the trend until May 2015, changing its trajectory to the upside again. So, as I mentioned before, the EMA by itself is not enough to make the decision to open or close a position. We keep going further in time and we see how the stock price doesn't go up for a long time. There is indecision and the price crosses down the EMA without the EMA changing its direction. Until October 2015, this is how you use the EMA to identify tendencies. An EMA crossover strategy involves monitoring two or more EMAs with different time frames to identify trading signals. Short-term traders typically rely on the 12 and 26-day EMA. When a shorter period EMA crosses above a longer period EMA, it generates a bullish signal indicating a potential uptrend. Conversely, when the shorter period EMA crosses below a longer period EMA, it generates a bearish signal suggesting a potential downtrend. In February of 2021, the 12th EMA crosses down the 26th EMA. You will want to initiate a short position, but as you can see, it's hard to determine how far the stock price is going to go. You could have entered three or two days before the signal and the stock price goes down. But then if you wait until the 12th EMA crosses up the 26th EMA to close the short position, this is likely to have result in a loss. In conclusion, the EMA shouldn't be used alone. It should be used in companion with other indicators as a way to confirm what those indicators are failing you.